So in this video we're looking at charging a capacitor. Here's a charging circuit. We need a resistor in there. Here's a cell with some particular supply voltage. Doesn't actually matter in this case. Um, and here's our capacitor. And we'll just stick a switch in there. Um, and when you close the switch, charging begins. And if we were to look at the, um, let's see, the voltage across the capacitor, um, so this is VC against time, we would see um, initially you have quite a rapid change, rapid increase, and then it would even off. Um, and as it evens off, that gets closer to the supply voltage, we'll call that VS the supply voltage. Doesn't in, in, in a perfect kind of sense it doesn't actually reach that. Um, it's it's sort of uh, an asymptote for that but in, in practice it gets as close as it needs to be so we can say it does reach that. Um, now um, what what governs the time, the size of the resistor, the larger the resistor um, the more time it will take because that reduces the current flow in the circuit. Um, and means it's only a trickle of charge building up on the capacitor. Um, so, so your charge when you close the switch, your charge starts building up. Uh, sorry, positive that way, negative that way, um, or negative that way, and electrons moving in that direction. Um, if you have a larger capacitor, it's obviously going to take longer to fill. It's like having a larger bucket; it takes longer to fill. So, if you've got the flow into the bucket small due to the large resistor, it's going to take a longer time. Um, and if your bucket's really big, it's going to take a longer time. We have something called a time constant, and that equals very nicely R times C. Very, very convenient um, that we have such a lovely formula for, for the time constant. Um, and uh, what the time constant is on this graph, it is the time it takes for the voltage to change by... So the change in voltage here is 63%. Oh, change of V um, is 63% of the remaining available voltage. So in the first instance, it's 63% of the total supply voltage. But then, for the next time constant, so that next bit of time until you get to 2T, um, you have cha the change in voltage here is going to be 63% of um, the Vs, uh, sorry, the Vs minus um, that that level after one time constant. So um, this this amount here um, is 63% of this amount, if you put it like that, and then so forth. So you have 63% of the remaining voltage will be another time constant, and then another time constant. And after three to five time constants, most people would consider that completely charged, but you don't need to worry too much about that. That's more an electronics and a technology application consideration. All you really need to know is that the time constant is the resistance times the um, capacitance, and uh, on the graph it's 63% of the available difference um, it takes to change when it's charging. You also have a time constant when it's discharging, but we'll do a separate video for discharging the capacitor and time constant. Very quickly, just want to look at a graph of the current against time um, and you obviously start with zero, you have to start with zero, when you close that switch it's going to jump up almost instantly to a maximum current then that current is going to drop off like that until it reaches the line which is basically zero. Okay, and again same thing, same thing um, the time constant for that 63% of the available voltage to drop and the reason why you have maximum current to start with is because as the capacitor builds up charge, builds up voltage, that voltage is going to oppose the current flow or if you like the um, amount of current or charge that's built up on the plates is going to resist any more current coming in uh, until you reach a limit. And yeah, when VC equals VS, that's when it's fully charged, that's what we said earlier. But, and there you go, that's charging capacitors and the time constant. Time constant units in seconds. Um, that's about that. Actually, this is a good one. You can do a uh, measurement yourself. You can set up the circuit with a kind of large capacitor and a large resistor and uh, do the experiment quite easily. Make your time constant around about one minute and then just stick your multimeter on there and watch it go up. And every minute you can get a reading and you can plot the graph and you get a very nice graph. It's a very reliable experiment um, and quite good hands-on, lots of fun. So if you're a teacher, that one's quite an easy one to do. 
Um, if you have breadboards, that's a good way to do it, or crocodile clips and banana clips. There you go.